Hi, and welcome to my sewing room. Today I've got over 10 different quilt design ideas to share with you for quilting around applique. This was supposed to be a Quilt Guild lecture that I was going to share in the spring of 2020, and that didn't happen. So I've got the itch to be sharing some quilting things, so here I am making some videos to share with you. Now, I don't tend to do too much traditional applique. I do more thread painting elements that get applique onto the quilt. So that's what you're going to see in most of the examples today. All right, let's, let's take a look at some of these examples. I've broken it down into five different categories of quilt design, depending on what you feel comfortable with. So first, um, and one of the easiest, is straight lines. And if you're on a domestic machine, you can use your walking foot. Um, if you're on a long arm, you can use a ruler, a straight ruler. One way to keep it interesting with straight lines is to change up the distance between the lines. And you'll see that in this example. This is a little play mat that I made for my daughter. Um, I also made one for my cousin's little boy who was born about six weeks after my daughter. And so you can see in this yellow block how I varied the distance between my lines just to add some interest to the quilting. And then also in this playmat example is another variation of straight line quilting. And some people call it grid work, um, but you'll see this is like a traditional cross hatching. Cross hatching is such a classic design to put behind applique. And then the third type of straight line quilting is straight-ish lines um, or wavy lines. And sometimes they can be very effective depending on what kind of applique you're quilting around. So in this first example, this was a, a little class sample that I had made. But in this top corner, you'll see how I did wavy lines. And it almost looks like the poppies like gently flowing in the breeze. Now, I did this free motion, but you can do wavy lines with a walking foot. And in this next example, I did quilt the wavy lines with my walking foot. So you'll see down here and then also in between the feather elements. Okay, so there's three ideas for quilting using straight or straight-ish lines. Varying the distance between your straight lines or creating a grid with straight lines, like as in cross-hatching, and then straight-ish lines, wavy lines. So next category would be free motion quilting. And of course you can do this on your domestic machine or a sit-down long arm, stand-up long arm, whatever you've got. One of the most basic free motion designs that we learn when we're starting out is stippling. And this is a great thing to put behind applique because it's fast and it's easy. So returning to this poppy example, you can see stippling behind this flower here. And then in this play mat example, I did stippling in the purple block behind the oval. And one reason I love stippling, like I said, is it's fast and it's easy. And so depending on how much time you want to invest in your quilting, um, it could be a great design to get the job done. And we'll talk a little bit at the end of the video on how to choose which design for your applique. And if you don't want to do stippling, another idea would be to pick one of the many free motion designs that are out there. And I've got examples of three different ones. And first, in this poppy quilt, sometimes it's called McTavishing, and it's essentially making a design element and then echoing it and kind of working your way around the quilt. So in this example, I picked a paisley shape, like a teardrop shape, and then echoed it a few times before I would break off and make a new paisley shape. And I just worked my way around the quilt. And then another free motion design would be S-curves. A lot of times you'll see them in borders where you just kind of make the S-curve back and forth, but you can also do them in a free motion meandering design, as in this block here. And what I did is I kind of broke it into little sections where I would do an S-curve and echo it a few times and then kind of break off and make a new little area where I would fill that in with S-curves. And then the third free motion design that I have to show you today is swirls. And I love them. I think they're a great filler design. So you'll see them in three different examples. First, in the poppy block behind me. In this poppy quilt, and you can see 
how closely I did the quilting here versus in this playmat quilt where my quilting is a little further spaced apart. Okay, moving on to the third category of quilt designs, which is echo quilting. And you could do echo quilting either on your domestic machine with your walking foot or your free motion foot. And of course, on a long arm, you can do echo quilting. And there are some rulers available for echo quilting a round applique, particularly if you're working on a long arm. So in this first example, back to this play mat, in the green block, I used my walking foot and echoed around the triangle. Another example of echo quilting that's free motion is in this hyacinth block in the quilt hanging behind me. And another example of echo quilting I have is this little wall hanging that I made for my mom. Now you can see it's not applique, this is actually paper pieced, but I think the concept is the same. So you can see how I use the whole design to echo quilt around. And my last example of echo quilting is this traditionally appliqued flower wall hanging. Now this was actually from a class I took with Karen K. Buckley. My mom took the same class and you will see hers in just a minute. But you can see that I chose to echo quilt in the background. And yes, I know, I should not have used real pencil to mark lesson learned. So our next category is custom design. So here's a blank example to start with. This is my mom's traditional applique from the Karen K. Buckley class that we took together. And you can see all that's done is just stitching around the applique. There's nothing done in the background. Which for this piece, you don't necessarily need to do anymore, but I think this gives us a good template for talking about custom quilting around, an, around applique. A lot of times when we talk about custom quilting, we want to pull out elements of the design that's already there. So in this case, flower and leaves. So if you wanted to do some custom quilting in the background, you could do some little leaf shapes. Perhaps there's a little leaf coming off this bud flower. Or another thing might be to do little curly Q tendrils um, coming off the vine to kind of fill in some of these negative space areas. Okay, so what are some other ways we can do some custom quilting? Well, let's take a look at this little poppy example that I have. And down here in the bottom, I did a little, what you could consider custom quilting. So with the blue background, it looks like the poppy is set against some sky. So you can do some quilting that kind of gives you the impression of sky flowing. And what I've done is I've combined two elements that we've already talked about. First would be these swirls. And then the second thing would be the wavy lines. And another example that we've already looked at would be this daffodil quilt. So I did the wavy lines in the grass around the appliqued leaves. But here I've actually used sky fabric and then used a feather design to kind of give the look of like rolling clouds. Another variation of custom quilting to get that cloud look would be in this example. So again, you'll actually see I use my walking foot to make wavy lines in the grass below. And you can see this variation of an heirloom feather flows behind the appliqued sunflower. It starts small at the bottom, giving the impression that those clouds are very far in the distance, um, and then billows up into these big clouds above. And for our last example of custom quilting, I have this piece. And I've used variations of different feather designs down here to give the impression of ferns and grass growing up amongst the flowers. And then again, some feathers to create the clouds above. Okay, last category for some quilting designs to use around applique would be ruler work. Again, ruler work you could do on your domestic machine or your sit down or stand up long arm. So in the examples I have today, I used a clamshell ruler. For this little play mat piece, in the red square, I put the clamshells behind the circle. Now in this example, the clamshell design builds on itself from the bottom of the block to the top. And on this other play mat, I used the same clamshell ruler, but I varied the direction. So if you take a closer look, 
you'll see how I divided this block into quarters and then I filled each quarter with the clamshell design. And I use that same clamshell design for this pink flower behind me. And of course you could use any ruler that you have that you like the look of to fill in a design behind your applique. Okay, so we've looked at over 10 different quilting designs to put behind applique. How do you choose which one to use for your project? Well first I would say how much time and energy do you want to put into the project? Because some of these designs can be tedious and depending on how densely you quilt it, it can take a lot of time to fill a space in. Also consider the purpose of your quilt. So now I realize that these play mats are going to get spit up on and used and washed a lot and typically I wouldn't put this much quilting into something like that. But again, this whole idea came from a guild presentation that I was going to do last spring. And so I didn't mind taking the time to quilt this for my daughter with some extra quilting, but that I could also use as a teaching example um, for that particular presentation. And something that you have a lot of time and energy into the applique, or in this case the thread painting, you might want to match that with the amount of quilting you put in the background. So this custom quilting in the background works well with these particular thread painted flowers. And we mentioned earlier in the video, if you're wanting the other end of the spectrum where it's just quick and easy to get it done, stippling or an overall meandering design will help you fill the space quickly. Another thing to consider for the background quilting of your applique is your thread choice. If you really wanted the design to stand out, you can use a thicker thread, um, like a 40 weight thread perhaps. Or if you want the actual quilt stitches of the background design to fade to the back and just kind of see an overall texture, I would recommend using a lighter weight thread. So maybe like a 60. Even for cross hatching, you can go as thin as a hundred weight thread. And that way you won't, the stitches will literally sink into the, the background and won't really be prominent. You'll just get the overall texture. And then a final thing to consider is, does the applique itself need any quilting in it? I've seen some applique with big beautiful baskets and flowers filling them, surrounded by really dense quilting in the negative background space, but with such a large area of the block not quilted, it can get kind of floppy looking. So that's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, that's something to keep in mind. And my daughter's with me now, so you'll see a little hand and foot coming into the frame. Well, hopefully that gives you some ideas to get your applique quilts quilted. If you have questions about any of these designs or want to see a tutorial on how to actually quilt the design, leave me a comment below and I'd be happy to make a video on that for you. All right, well, that's it for today. I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> Stippling or a simple meandering overall design. Stippling or a simple. Bye. You chatting it up? Yeah. Yeah.